Main chick versus side bitch. Chapter 8. Arian. I was dreaming about him. Going over how he plunged his dick so deep inside me. Twisting me on the bed and putting my head into the pillow while I tooted my ass up to him. I screamed his name over and over again. Calling him daddy over and over. Until knocking came crashing into my bedroom and my dream faded away. Arian, it's me! I heard him yelling, but I still had to be dreaming. I grabbed a robe and shuffled to the door, looking through the peephole, but I really did see Dwayne. I opened the door, quickly letting him in. What the hell is going on? What are you doing back here? I was glad he was back, but it was three in the morning, and I had to be right back up for a seven o'clock appointment. I just, man, I... I've been riding around thinking about this shit all night. He walked deeper into my apartment, sitting down on the couch. I just can't believe what went down earlier, shorty. Like, I haven't been able to get this shit out of my head. Was this nigga serious? The dick was good, but I sent him home to his chick. Truthfully, I did the shit just to show her tired ass that she wasn't all that. Now this nigga was back trying to be all lovey-dovey. I mean... What you think, I'm tripping? Man, I'm going to leave. I'm just going to leave. He stood up to go, but I blocked his way. I still didn't want him to leave. Maybe this was a good thing. No, I'm just I'm just shocked. I was asleep, and I thought you and the lawyer lady, man, I don't even want to talk about her. He moved closer to me, his cold hands pulling back my robe, revealing my nakedness. I just want to think about you and me, he whispered as he nibbled on my ear. I've been wanting this since I met you. He said, pulling me close. I said I only wanted the money, some dick, and eventually I would just move on, but this man was fine as hell. Maybe prison hadn't made me as hard as I thought it had, because as we kissed, I felt butterflies taking flight in my stomach. And as much as I was trying to fight it, this nigga had me wet, horny, and... Probably somewhat in love with his ass, all within one week. Dwayne was more of a man than I've ever had. He had turned my life around. He gave me the money I needed to pay my lawyer. He was pushing me customers every day. And every night, he was at my house, breaking me off the best dick I've ever had. Now today, bright and early at the shop, I was looking at my man. He had a few clients waiting and a serious look etched on his face. He was all about his business. And everything in my life was good, especially since I haven't heard from Miss Lawyer, bitch. He hasn't said her name, and I haven't asked any questions. But every day I came to the shop in my tennis shoes and my hair pulled back, ready to fight this bitch. I wasn't even the type to fight no bitch over no man, but with how good his dick was and how much I was falling for this nigga, I would have went up against all the dykes in prison for Dwayne. Since I got with Dwayne, there was a smile on my face that couldn't be removed. And as I parted my client's hair, I couldn't help but dream about how I was going to ride his dick tonight. But a loud beeping of a truck ruined my daydream. Looking outside, I thought I was seeing things, but before I could move my mouth to talk, Dwayne was already screaming. Hey, yo, oh shit, that's my car they towing. What the fuck? He dropped his clippers so fast and flew out the door, and I was right behind him, right along with every other nosy motherfucker in the shop. Yo, why you towing my shit? He yelled at the tow truck driver. The fat, sloppy-ass dude flopped out of the truck, showing Dwayne some papers. I couldn't hear what they were saying. But Dwayne's hands were moving as a stiff, cold breeze moved across the parking lot. People were whispering and laughing. I wanted to tell all of their ass to shut the fuck up until a car pulled up right on the parking lot with the speakers blaring, blocking our view of Dwayne in the tow truck. Tell that motherfucker to move! I screamed. I took a step closer as the door opened and I saw the devil. Little Miss Lawyer bitch smiling. What the fuck is going on, Kiara? Why are you toying my shit? The bitch couldn't have him, so she was going to take back all her shit like a petty bitch. Baby, why are you worried about that old truck when you got a new Benz? 
Her words hit me in the face. I was confused until she stepped back and presented the car to Dwayne. Yo, yo, this me? You serious? This mine? I looked at the car more closely. It had to be brand new with temporary plates, tinted windows, and it already had custom black rims making the car look fierce. It made the vehicle on the tow truck look like shit compared to this. Dwayne ran his hand across the car without even looking my way, walking past me as if I wasn't even here. Pulling the bitch close, he kissed her right in front of me, and not no peck on the cheek, but a full-fledged, tongue-rolling kiss. I stepped around the car only to see him grabbing her ass like he was about to fuck her in the parking lot in front of all of us. Go ahead and take it for a drive, baby. It's all yours, she said, handing him the keys. Damn right. Thanks, baby. Thank you so much. See this, y'all? I got a new car. You see my shit? The tow truck driver continued his job, towing away Dwayne's truck as he slid in the bins and backed off the parking lot. Little Miss Lawyer turned to me as Dwayne pulled away, a stare down I had been waiting on for far too long. I didn't imagine that shit was going to go down like this. Looking back, everybody had went back in the shop now. They were probably used to this rich-ass bitch and her antics, but all this bullshit made me sick. Dwayne rolled up and down the street as Miss Lawyer bitch stared at me. Finally, after a half a minute, she spoke. Your name is Arian, right? Yeah, why? Arian Collins? She asked, stepping to me with a smile on her face. Extending her hand, I wasn't sure how this bitch knew my whole name, but I shook her pathetic ass hand in return. Well, (laughs) it's nice to put a name with a face. I think we got off on the wrong foot the last time I saw you. I'm Kiara, the co-owner of the shop and Dwayne's fiance. She wiggled a ring in my face like I gave a fuck. Only if she knew her fiancé was at my crib for the last week fucking my brains out. Where was she when he was calling my name and pulling my hair all in my bed for the last seven days? And what the fuck is that supposed to mean? (laughs) Well, I just thought we should get to know each other. Since you were new here and... I'm sort of like your boss, you know. (laughs) She laughed, but I didn't see shit funny. Hopefully, you know, we can be friends. I'm sure you need all the friends you can get, you know, with your custody case and all. I felt like a bowling ball had been dropped on my stomach. All air left my body as I looked this bitch in the face. Her smile faded as she continued. I know you've been fucking my man, and that's cool. Believe me, you aren't the first, and you probably won't be the last. You see, that's my man, and soon to be my husband. Dwayne rolled down the street yet another time, burning rubber as the bitch kept talking. He's an adventurer. He has this thing for little bitches like you, which are a dime a dozen. But you see, a bitch like me is a once in a lifetime. I didn't have the words to say to this hoe. My hand clenched into a fist, was ready to hit her in her fucking forehead, but I let her keep talking. You see, I know you have a case coming up, the custody of your daughter. Your baby is six years old, right? (sighs) Little Aviana, she is so precious. She knew my baby's name. The bitch was laughing about it. Yo, how the fuck you know my daughter? But she cut me off. Bitch, (laughs) I know everything under the motherfucking sun. And I know that if you don't leave Dwayne alone, you're not going to ever know what it feels like to have custody of your daughter again. She stepped closer to me. Our faces so close that we were almost touching each other. The bitch was staring me down when Dwayne pulled back into the parking lot. He jumped out of the car quicker than Superman and tried stepping between us. Yo, 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 what's going on here, baby? What's going on? But he wasn't talking to me. He was talking to Miss Lawyer, bitch. Oh, (laughs) nothing, boo. I was just introducing myself to Arian here. (laughs) She laughed, straightening her suit. It was so nice meeting you, Miss Collins, and welcome to Cutting Edge. The bitch was trying to be funny, but I was so mad I felt like crying. 
Dwayne didn't even look at me. He pulled her off to the side, put his hand around her waist and his back to me. That told me what it was. This nigga was a bitch, and he didn't give a fuck about me. As mad as I was, I wanted to fuck him up and this hoe, but I had to think rational. If she knew this much about me and my baby, that meant she could fuck my whole world up, and Dwayne and his dick weren't worth Aviana not being with her mother. I turned around, going back into the shop, and all eyes were on me. It wasn't a mystery that me and Dwayne were fucking, but until today, I thought it was a good thing. Now as I walked back into the shop to my station, I felt like the shop fool, but I held back my tears, smiling for my client like nothing was wrong, but instead I was ready to kill a motherfucker. I watched as another car arrived, some black tinted town car. Dwayne gave the lawyer bitch a kiss and opened the back door for her and helped her inside. She was right. I didn't have that type of money. He was a bitch-ass nigga for claiming he wanted to be with me, and he was through with her, but now he was kissing her ass. When he stepped back in the shop, I didn't even look his way. Instead, I kept repeating the number three to myself over and over again. That was how many days I had until I got my daughter back. Right now, that was the only thing that mattered. Not no cheating ass nigga, not no rich lawyer bitch, but my daughter, Aviana. She was the only thing I had left in this world.